What's up, what's up everybody? It's your boy AD and that's all day and I'm in the spot to do yesterday's Smackdown review for October 1st, 2021. Now I already made the video about this and the whole Sasha and the Max, but I will talk about this for a minute because I kind of forgot about this part. But yeah, this is how SmackDown really ended. The man and the queen make powerful statements as the 2021 WWE draft picks up on SmackDown. And yes, they moved Charlotte to SmackDown, which has just got me totally confused because you're still the Raw Women's Champion, but they move you to SmackDown. They made Sasha and Bianca do that whole entire match just so Becky Lynch can interfere for no reason. And she talked through the whole match. It's like she was taking attention away from the match that they had. And then all of a sudden, she comes in, interferes. Sasha picks up the win. But at the end, Charlotte comes in. And th this was just so pointless to me. And Becky just stands there with her belt. And that's how I end. Like, come on. Neither one of them didn't even do anything today. Neither one of them. Neither one of them wrestled, did anything. And they are really making this women's division confusing as hell. And what the hell? But I already made a video about this and Sasha and them, so I ain't going to talk much about that. The show started off with the bloodline coming out. I'm, I'll probably mention some of the drafts. The show started off with the bloodline coming out. Same old, same old. Roman wants to be acknowledged. Brock Lesnar appears, which I kind of figured because he wasn't that extreme rule. So I figured like, oh, he's going to pop up. Now he going to pop up like he did before. I felt like this was a straight replay of what happened after SummerSlam. He comes out, didn't make it to the pay-per-view. Uh, Roman swings on the first. So the fight did break out. Roman gets suplexed. The Usos come in. They get suplexed. Roman runs out the ring. Literally the same old, same old. Roman runs out the ring, act like he wants to come back. He doesn't. So so the Usos both take F5s, which look better than his suplexes. Because, again, I'm not geeked. I'm not excited about no star right now. Y'all ride Roman way too hard. I don't care if it's Brock Lesnar or whoever. It's, it's, it's like he's not going to lose. And every time he is finna lose, Roman finna lose, he always gets help. You really expect us to be behind Brock Lesnar? And his suit flexes aren't even as crisp as what they used to be, man. Like, his F5s are still pretty decent. But them suit flexes, I don't know what happened with that. But, um, hell yeah, man. So, that's what happened, man. Uh, I mean, I guess you could say it was exciting. But at the same time, I feel like it's nothing to be excited about. Because, what's the point? And yeah, now the match is finally set for the next pay-per-view for them to go against each other, but come on now, dog. Do you do you really think Brock is gonna beat Roman? Come on, how many people have we seen fall? Come on now. This is just all for hype. But, alright, you know I'm gonna make a video on Happy Corbin. Now, this Seth Rollins promo, and I'm not even really a fan of Seth Rollins, but I ain't gonna lie. This actually had me tuned in and interested. This is like one of the first real interesting things I ever seen Seth Rollins do. Seth Rollins invaded Edge's home. Yes, this kind of took me back a little bit. During his epic rematch against Edge on September 1st edition of SmackDown, Seth Rollins delivered a stomp that sent his opponent away in the ambulance. Weeks later, the R-rated R superstar emerged to confront the visionary of Drew. Oh, that name. One problem, though, his adversary wasn't there. Instead, Rollins showed up at Edge's home. Although Beth Phoenix and the kids were not there, Rollins let himself in and made himself a home. A horrifying moment for the artist, for the Rated R Superstar. No, this shit was fucking funny as hell. He was going around in his house drinking his orange juice, sitting in his chair, talking about his family, talking about his kids, running around like a fool. Talking hella shit while being in his house. I mean, talking mad shit. Like, this type of shit is the stu stuff that I really hit clo close to home, man. Like, I ain't gonna lie. This is definitely, like, one of the best promos I've seen it, uh, Seth Rollins do. I was just sitting here watching this shit. I was like, man, what he gonna do next? He was being so ignorant. He's being so rude. But, okay. Let's keep going.
Then we had Liv Morgan versus go against Carmella again. And then no contest. I mean, to be honest, I don't even know why they went against each other. I don't know. We just seen them extreme rules. And then all of a sudden, Carmella puts the mask on. What? Because of the turnbuckle thing? The match ended really quick. This was real pointless. Then we had a right. We had a, a four on four, right? Eight man tag. We had the Street Profits and the New Day go against the Alpha Academy and Dolph Ziggler and, R and Robert Roode. Man, that was a crazy one. Uh, you know, it's what to be expected when WWE puts these type of matches together. It was a good match, you know, just something I guess just for the entertainment and what was going on because we already had a whole draft today. Still disappointed they split the new day up though. Like damn, y'all literally split the new day up again. Put Biggie on Raw and kept new and then moved New Day to SmackDown. Like that's literally like what they did last year. And then that was what that was something crazy about the drafts. They was doing a lot of ping pong and like yeah, some people I mean it's not over. We still gotta wait till Monday. But yeah, some people they kept, but then a lot of people they just kept ping pong, you know, back and forth. Like, okay, you were on Raw this year, now you're on SmackDown. Stuff like that. But anyways, New Day Street Profits pick up the win. And then this was the final match. Sasha Banks defeats Bianca Belair. And I've already made a video about this and explained what happened. And Becky again interfered for no reason. No reason to interfere in this match. Sasha picks up the win. But again, for what point? And then at the end of the show, they got the nerve to show Charlotte going against Becky. See, now they're colliding shows instead of keep sticking to what stuff is i know the draft is still going but this is just really weird man now y'all fighting basically for nothing just to get your matches interfered with but mm, let me see i mean the drafts like i said you had some that were like okay that was expected like roman reigns Big E, that was expected you had a few surprises you got a couple of new people from NXT that joined so far. I'm not going to go through the whole draft. I just wanted to talk about that. I made the other video, and yeah, I got to still make my Happy Corbin video, so that's coming too. But, all right, I wanted to make this one a little quick, and I'll see y'all guys later. Hit that like button, comment, subscribe if you haven't. Peace out.